I now have Apple CarPlay, GPS monitoring, tire pressure monitoring, blind spot monitoring, dash cam, and the sentry mode all on my T7. This is the AIO 5 Light Smart Monitoring System by Chigi. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what this thing is and what this handy piece of kit can do. But first, let's have a look at what's in the box. There are a lot of optional accessories available, and this is what you get as part of the main kit. A nice big five inch touch screen with 5G Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. You get dual cameras with Sony IMX307 sensors. They shoot up to 1080p with HDR and anti-shake built in. You have your wiring harness and a couple of stickers and goodies. You get the external GPS, some adhesive mounts, security tools, cable ties, splicing brackets, and the mounting bracket with different size spaces, as well as the instruction manual and a quick start guide. The remote control comes with the user manual, the wireless remote control, a universal mounting bracket, security tool, and screws and a spacer. The tire pressure kit comes with two tire pressure and temperature sensors, two lock nuts, and a small spanner. So overall, it wasn't a massive job. Um, it's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. The longest part was routing the cables and just making sure you're following the original harness just so it doesn't vibrate and wear through and create shorts. That's, the, that's probably the biggest point I can give you right here. I had the plastics off straight away. That gives you a nice bit of room to be able to work with. So for now, I've got the unit mounted up to the bars. I do have the 12 millimeter adapter, so I can mount it up here if I want. I do have my Garmin Zumo XT mounted here. So I'm just gonna see how I go first. I might even relocate the Garmin here, move this over, and then have this up here so I can see everything right there rather than having anything on the bars at all. Uh, but it's a nice solid looking, you know, solid looking piece of kit. And it's on the back, there's, there's little shock absorbers, little dampeners on there so that you can take this off-road and the vibration isn't going to kill it. So there's that bit of movement there, which is pretty clever. I started with the unit first, just so I knew where the cable was going to be run. And so I've got it all running all under there, all under in down here. You can't see it, but that's where all the connections and everything are. There's the remote control. That's wireless, which is super handy. So I've just got it mounted underneath the, the mirror here. In the photos and everything, they have this up this part here, but I've got the heated grips there. Just gotta make it work for yourself. The holes in the plate allow for easy movement and relocation of the control itself. There's the front camera. I love how sort of hidden it is. I guess like, you know, when you're walking around the bike, you can't really see, you can't even really tell that it's there. And it fits so snug under the SRC crash bars here. There's just a little plate that was on it and literally exactly the same size. It was, it was meant to be, it was meant to be right there. I'm really happy with the way that turned out. I've got the GPS module mounted under here. It's just double-sided tape. You can tape that anywhere. Just make sure you clean the surface. Um, but I've got the harness running all along here underneath all the plastics. And then it comes up into the battery. I have the rear camera mounted right there underneath the plastic guard here. I might even sneak it in under here a little bit more if I can get that field of view happening still. I'm still yet to take this out for a ride and do the calibration and everything like that, just to see how it all looks. And then if I need to take this off, I can just unscrew the camera from here, let it dangle and then take all that off still. Now you do have three cables when it comes out to the back to the battery. So you got your positive and negative and then you do have this yellow wire and that is for your accessories or something to trigger so that when you turn your bike on, the unit turns on and it's not on all the time. So I tapped into my Parker's circuit because I run LEDs right around. I've got enough headroom to allow for the extra current draw and that works fine. And these are the tire pressure sensors. So they just screw on, you got a lock nut on the back. Um, yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty damn easy to install. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty self-explanatory. Let's have a look at the unit and see what it actually does. So I just bumped the bike and this has what's called sentry mode. So if there's a knock or a bump, the front and rear cameras start silently recording. You can adjust the input level of the sensitivity. So you can have a high, medium, or low. I think this is on medium by default. So yeah, that's, that's pretty clever. All right, let's fire it up. And so then after there's been a knock or a bump, you are prompted with this. So you can just check it. And then you can see all your little videos of how many times it's been bumped or knocked around you can go back and view that straight away. And the cool thing about this is that when you're in loop recording mode or dash cam mode, it doesn't overwrite this file. And there's also a crash detection mode. So if you do come off or you have an accident, the unit detects that it was an accident and it saves that file in a different sort of section on the memory card so it doesn't get overwritten. 
pretty clever. This is your main dash screen. You have a chip computer there, you can reset it, and you have an hour meter as well. You've also got a compass, the GPS unit, allows you to have elevation, compass, and all that sort of stuff, which is really cool. You've also got your tire monitoring over here. It's, <laughs> I'm running pretty low. I've got 17 on the front and 22 at the rear. I'll pump these up and we'll see how accurate it is when we're on the road. And then you have car link, video, meter, and setup down the bottom. So let's just jump straight into CarLink. So this is your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, whatever it's called. It works exactly the same as if you have it in your car. Uh, really nice and easy to see. It works really well. It's very smooth. Even the apps move really nicely. It's like you're actually still using an iPhone. And then of course for Google Maps and everything like that, it just, it works a treat. It's nice and bright, very easy to use. And the, the touch screen is very responsive as well. You do have buttons up here, so I'm pressing the first button, that just brings you straight back home. The next one is video, we'll have a look at that. So we've got the front cam here, and then you've got the, the B camera there. You can switch it around like that. It's, you can have it, so that's there. You can change all the options, so we've still got all the data overlay, kilometers and everything there. You can turn that off if you want and just have it purely as a revision mirror, which is pretty clever. I still need to go in and calibrate it. I've got the lines on there just to make sure everything's all calibrated nicely. Um, but yeah, you can get rid of all that sort of stuff. Lots of options. Um, all your settings here. Uh, you can change your resolution, 720 or 1080, depending, I guess, what size memory card you have and how much you want to use. You get your video length. The max length you can do is three minutes. Data overlay, you've got your collision lock, and then you've got mic on and off, so it has a mic, and you also have your vibration parking sensitivity. You can go in and have a look at all your files and everything there. You also have an app so that you can go through on your phone, connect it up and download everything onto your phone and then just work from it from there. Screen's super responsive. Let me put a set of gloves on. Yeah, same, so just super responsive, which is nice. Let's go back here. And now we'll go into meter. This is where you see all of your information. So we're talking temperature of your tires, your tire pressures, voltage, your altitude, your time, trip computer, speed, compass, and normal normal time. There is an option to get the OBD plug. So you plug that in and that'll just give you more information. So we're talking engine temp and throttle as well, which is pretty cool. And then we've got setup. You got features connected to your Cardo. I mean, it does it pretty much <laughs> automatically. Everything's super simple to start connecting up and once you connect it, like, that's it. You don't have to do it all over again. Lots of information there. You can change the brightness of your screen and everything, your storage on the unit itself, as well as an external micro SD card, firmware updates, language, all that sort of stuff. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much the overview of the unit itself. And like I said before, you do have buttons on the top. The button's home. Next button is your Apple CarPlay. Next button is your cameras. You can switch between the two. And the next one's to lock your screen. The unit is IP67 waterproof, but water droplets on the screen can cause false touch control. So all you have to do is press the button on the top right here and that locks the screen. And then to get out of it, you just swipe up. And for the remote, you long press and that'll just cycle through the menu one way. So you've got your Apple CarPlay, then you get your camera, you got all your stats. And so when you're in Apple CarPlay mode, you can just use these to navigate all around your stuff here. You just hit okay to go in and then you can yeah, keep doing that. Long press to go back, and then you can long press here to exit the whole thing. Obviously you can take calls, make calls, and it's all controlled through your cardo as well. Now that we've gone through all that, let's take it out of the road and see how it performs. Okay, first things first, let's chuck some air in the tires. So it's gone up a little bit. So the back says it's 24 PSI and the front is 19. Uh, if you just cycle to the actual dashboard, with all the info, this one here. Temperature's gone up, so the rear is 28 degrees Celsius and the front is 25 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty mad. It's gonna go 28 all around. Oh man, check this thing out. <laughs> so it says 18. Yeah, 24 PSI, yeah. It's pretty much bang on. So right now it's still saying 24, uh, 19 at the front, 24 at the back. I wonder if it just takes a little while to get going. Let's have a look. There we go. 27 and 27. So you just need to move to, to activate it, I guess. Um, so it's one PSI off. Maybe I'll let a little bit out when I put the valve on. Uh, that's <laughs> it's pretty damn accurate though. Ah, yeah. It's showing... 
<laughs> that's so good that's your blind spot detection right there that's awesome there's a little red bar that pops up depending on which side the the car is in your blind spot that worked perfectly for that car right there but we'll test it out when we hit the freeway a little bit more i did choose peak hour <laughs> for a reason so let's see how this goes that's a pretty windy day so apologies for the audio if it's a little bit garbage there we go caution on my right there's a the car there and you can adjust the sensitivity for that as well so i might increase it just so that it shows me all the time when there's a car there Yeah, very clever stuff. That's working really well. <laughs> That's awesome. The T7s read 10Ks faster. Um, and you can see that it's pretty close. Yeah. We'll just go to Spotify here. Loads up on your playlist and everything. That's it's so good. camera is on it looks great it looks great from here you can just use that as your vision mirror if you want to it's just a funny thing just being able to see what's directly behind you and knowing that everything's being recorded all the time you know you got that peace of mind you got the dash cam rolling front and behind um, any incidents you have it all on camera it's yeah it's, it's awesome this is what you want so the screen is really easy to see, it's really responsive as well, you can just tap out of it, like everything that you do on it, it just registers, which is so nice, especially with gloves on. And then boom, Google Maps right there. So here's the blind spot detection settings, hopefully you can see that. So we've got the speed settings, 0 to 50 k's an hour, so I've set it on 20 kilometers an hour. I'm going to leave that there, but we've got the sensitivity recognition, that's on standard, I'm going to put on high. Uh, and see how much that changes everything. I've also got the voice alarm, so you can have it, have it vocally say, Oh yeah, there's someone in your thing, but I'm going to have that off. Okay, let's try that. Yes, yeah, so it comes up and stays a lot longer than what there was before. Let's have a look, there's no one behind me. Let's put it in video mode. There we go. I think that's better. I think having it on high for the sensitivity is much better because I wanted to tell me every time there's a car there. Not that I won't do a head check, but it's just good to have it there. You have a little glimpse down, and if it's red, don't go. I'm not sure what sort of bike you ride. I ride the T7 and the Street Scrambler. The T7 has very little tech on it and that's one of the main reasons why I bought it. But maybe you want a little bit of tech on your bike. Maybe you want easier navigation, Apple CarPlay, blind spot monitoring, dash cam, sentry mode, GPS monitoring. Whatever the reason, the AIO 5 Lite Smart Motorcycle Riding System does it all and it does it really, really well. And yes, this will be staying on the T7 for sure. I can't get past the tire pressure monitoring and the rear camera. It's the best. And the whole connectivity thing. And then not using your phone. You leave your phone in your pocket and you just hop on your bike. It's one less thing you have to do. So good. Chigi are running an exclusive deal. We can get 38% off the super early bird special on Indiegogo. Links and more information are in the description below. I hope you had a fantastic Christmas and I'll see you guys in the next vid. I'm gonna show you exactly what this unit is, what it can does, what it can does. <laughs> what it can does. This is the AIO5 Light Smart Monitoring System by Chigi, and I'm gonna show you exactly what it can do. <laughs> Freaking hell. What it can does.